Hi, welcome to our video which shows how we created a bioactive enclosure for our hedgehogs. The hedgehogs are currently housed in temporary containers with heat lamps and controllers to keep them comfortable during the four week setup period. We wanted to move away from the unnatural environment that we currently had using the IKEA Vitolf cabinets, which included many plastic and unnatural items. We start by tidying and getting ready all of the things we will need. Place and potting soil, moss, coconut soil and bark are used for the substrate. Plants are chosen for their safety with hedgehogs, and being hardy for the arid environment we are planning. Clean up crew and live soil are discussed in detail later. The sleeping house and water dispenser will be on a raised area supported with wooden fence. Next the position of vines, rocks and other decorative items are determined. This can take some time with much deliberation. In our case, the vine and the large white brown rock will be unmovable once the substrate is added, so we spent some time getting their location right. We had already prepared one enclosure, so had some idea of how we wanted to lay this one out. It's important to consider how the hedgehog will move around the enclosure, as well as how it will look. We decided upon an upright position for the vine, and some time was spent securing this to the Detolf internal support frame. Variations to the wooden fencing, and access to the raised area were explored. It took a few modifications but eventually a suitable fixing was achieved by hollowing out the back of the vine, drilling and using cable ties to secure it. The plants were then added in the remaining spaces, to complete the initial layout. We then took a step back to review and confirm we were happy with what we had so far. We then began removing the items so that we could begin adding the substrate. It is worth quickly checking that none of the items prevents the lid from being fitted and closing properly. In our case, the vine is close, but not quite touching. Now we can start adding the substrate, starting with the support for the wheel. The wheel will be located on a bed of sand, to provide good support, prevent movement, and also allow easier removal for cleaning. Next comes the moss layer. Sphagnum moss is spread across the entire bottom of the enclosure. Once out of the bag, it easily spreads and expands to fill the entire bottom area. About half a liter is held back, for use at a later stage. On top of the moss, we add a layer of coconut soil. 
This comes in a 1 liter block, and must be expanded using warm water. It takes a while to absorb the water, but once complete, it will have expanded to around 4.5 liters. This is then scattered across the top of the moss layer. We then begin mixing the sand and soil that will cover the moss and coconut. We are aiming for a 4 cm layer, roughly 60% sand, 40% soil. We measure the tank length and width to give us the area, and multiply by the layer height to give us the volume. In our case, the 4 cm layer requires 15 liters of sand, and 10 liters of soil. We mix it in small batches measured by eye. There is no need for great accuracy. Mixing in smaller quantities makes it easier to break up the lumps in the soil, and is significantly easier to lift and distribute inside the enclosure. We begin with the raised section, filling and positioning the wooden fence. Oil is added and compacted around the base of the fence to make it sturdy. We add pine bark onto the raised area, to give it more volume. The soil sand mixture is added across the entire enclosure. Next we start adding in the bigger items, such as rocks, that will be semi-buried within the substrate. Plants are added at this stage, dug through the sand soil layer. Echeveria and Sansevieria are kept within their pots, to protect from digging by the hogs. Tillandsia is directly added to the substrate, as it is split from a larger plant. Next we mix up the top layer of the substrate. This will be approximately 30% sand, 60% soil, with the remaining made up of live soil. In our case, this is another 4 cm layer, and will require 7 liters of sand, 15 liters of soil, and 2.5 liters of live soil. The live soil, we obtain from a local enthusiast in the UAE. It is dark and earthy, very similar to homemade compost. However searching through you can find many residents. Centipedes. Night crawlers. Isopods. This live soil will seed the entire substrate with small organisms. We purchased a combined amount that we split between the two hedgehog enclosures, mixing into the top substrate layer.
the top layer is then spread across the entire enclosure, in and around everything that has already been added. This layer is sprinkled, and not compacted in any way. The sphagnum moss reserved from earlier, is scattered across the top of this layer. This completes the enclosure assembly. You can clearly see the different substrate layers. We let Wilf, our youngest hedgehog, have a quick look around. We started adding some of the cleanup crew, and gave a few of the super worms to Wilf. I didn't fully document the cleanup crew for this enclosure, so we'll show them being added to the other enclosure. Note. The hedgehogs will not move into the new enclosures for four weeks, to give the cleanup crew time to get established. For each enclosure, the cleanup crew consists of 160 meal worms, 25 isopods, 50 dubia roaches, and 65 super worms. Most of the mealworms will pipate, and hatch into beetles, which should have time to mature, and lay more eggs, before the hedgehogs are added. We tap the containers to ensure any eggs laid during transport are emptied into the enclosure. All our cleanup crew come from the local supplier in the UAE. The enclosures will now sit for four weeks. 